and uh, when I get to the Docs page, I'm going to go over to the JavaScript area here and go to the guide. So I'll click on Guide, and then it says, you know, getting started, and there's a lot of information here. Um, I'm actually going to, um, maybe if I go to Users here, and you can see like a user has properties, a username, a password, and email, and then it says signing up, right? Let me zoom in on this a little bit here, right? And uh, you can see that here is the code, right? So they've got parse new user, or new parse.user, set username, password, email. So I had to read all this in order to know you know how to do that right and then here they have you know sign up null and uh, and you know success and error I don't know where it explains what this first parameter is maybe I'll have to dig around for that but it doesn't really say what that is here um, and then if we scroll down a little further there's a section called logging in and we're gonna do this next so we'll take a quick look at this and we you know you should read through the documentation first right but you can see here it says you know parse user login so, you know, when you log a user in, you don't have to create a brand new user, right? We're just going to call parse.user.login, and then we'll pass the, the, the name and the password for the user. And then the third parameter, again, is going to be an object with a success and an error property. And then success will get a user, and an error will get a user and an error message, okay? or an error object that will have a message property, okay? So it's very similar to signing up, but a little bit different, right? So let's give it a try. So the first thing we need to do is we'll need to set up our form. And I think it's in, it's okay in this case to just, you know, give this form an ID, and we'll preface this with login, right? So we'll call this the login form. And then we'll give an ID name to each of these um, input fields here. So this will be login, username, and this one will be login, password, right? Okay. And uh, now that we've got that, now we'll go back to our JavaScript. And here's my register form. And then maybe down here, I'll put... Um, login form and again we'll use jQuery and we will select the login form so remember this login form the ID name this is the ID name for the the form element okay so the form element even though you're gonna click the submit button down here we don't have to listen for a an action or actually this is the submit button we don't have to listen for an action on the submit button clicking the submit button will submit the whole form right so the form is actually going to take an action and here we can you know um, register to listen for that event right and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually we're going to do it this way we're going to type in a function name here and this function will get an event object and we want that and we'll use the event object to prevent the default behavior of the form just to make sure that it doesn't try to reload the page. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the same strategy we used up here and we'll collect the username and the password, right? So we'll say, uh, you know, username variable equals, and then we'll use jQuery to get at the value of that form element and then we'll do the same thing with password okay so there we go login username login password and then for password we better get the value of the of that um, form field right okay so now we want to do the login so what we'll do is we'll say parse dot user dot log and I forget if it's an uppercase I on login let's check right we'll take a quick look at the documentation and uh, yes it is indeed an uppercase I right so so let's uh, let's put that away and then now we've got our um, 
username will go here, the password will go here, and then we need an object with two properties, right? Success colon, and this will be a function that receives the user if it's successful. So now remember, like we gotta keep all these curly brackets straight, right? Like, like you can see brackets is highlighting this curly bracket when I put the cursor next to it and it highlights the other one, the matching one. So these two go together and then these two on the outside go together, right? So right here would be the comma and then we would do our next property error and then follow it up with the value which will be a function, right? And then once I've written that, I like to write this the whole syntax so I don't miss one of the matching characters like the curly brace or the or the parentheses, right? So after I've done that, then I'll I'll start formatting the text with a couple line returns to make it read a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. Okay, and oh yeah, I forgot. Let's uh, uh, let's get the user and the error object in the case of an error, right? So this will take two parameters there. And then we're we're good, right? Why don't we say console dot log, and then we'll say um, login succeeded, okay? And if we get an error, we'll say console dot log, and then we'll say login. Uh, how about just error? And then again, we can get the error message by saying error dot message. Okay, so now let's let's give this a test, right? So that's looking pretty good, um, and I think that might work. Let's try it out, right? So uh, let's go to our page. I'll have to refresh Command R, right? So now I'm back at the site. I'll click login, and I think I created a, a user named New with a three letter password and uh, and then I'll type in, I'll type it in and I'll click submit. Oh, login succeeded, right? So that wasn't too bad, right? That was pretty easy. Um, and now what we wanna do at this point is, uh, you know, we wanna make it clear like when you're logged in and when you're not logged in. And I'd like that to show up here because if you're logged in, I don't want it to say log in, I want it to say log out, right? And maybe we don't have to show the register button Right. Okay. So, um, so let's uh, we'll do that in another video because we'll I, I have a little plan for that. Right. It'll take a few minutes to set up, but uh, but for right now, I, we can see that that's kind of working. Right. Um, it doesn't really show me that I'm logged in here, but Parse has a little system where you can ask, um, you know, parse.user.current to get you know the status or the current user when they're logged in. So it's pretty easy to to work with. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's helpful to people.